Welcome back to the Mountain Morning Show. At the Kimball Arts Center, a new exhibition opens tomorrow, and I'm joined by Lynn Blodgett, whose exhibition that just happens to be Soldier Boy, Soldier Girl. Uh, Very cool. Thank you. How are you today? I'm doing well. How are you, sir? Good. It's nice to be here with you. Well, thank, thank you. you. Yeah, you flew in, what, last night? Well, yeah, I did. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, uh, you've got a, quite a schedule going on. That's uh, always kind of kind of crazy. Lots of time in airplanes, but absolutely, it's good to be here. And uh, interestingly, our uh, my, my brother and I started our company. We started just to the east of here. Really, a this building. Part. Excellent. Uh, yeah, yeah. So uh, that was 30 years ago. And how about that? Yeah. Well, you've been shooting a lot longer than 30 years, though, haven't you? I have. I, I uh, started when I was just about 10, and wow, and, uh, just. You know, to have a little black and white film camera, and it was fun. Uh, Are you? You're probably real happy with your parents giving you that I, yeah, opportunity. I, yeah. You know, looking back on it, it uh, I didn't realize that I would be as interested in it as uh, for so long. But uh, yeah, it was a great, great thing to, to start with. Well, you know, the thing that I think most photographers struggle with, uh, obviously, is that you know it is capturing light and how to light things is probably the thing that most people over their lifetime of photography are going to struggle the most with. Uh, although people find their niche, mm -hmm. and it seems that you found one with with some pretty dramatic lighting. That's something that you're sort of well known for. You know, I I, uh, I have every kind of strobe you could possibly think I of. I bet. <laughs> <laughs> but I I don't I don't like strobes. I don't know how to do it. You know, it's, it's right. a real there's a real knack to. They're to, hard to yeah. It's hard uh, to use artificial light. And to get to get light that looks natural and. Uh, uh, so I shoot everything with natural light. This is the, this whole exhibit was shot with window light, and and uh, I did a project on the homeless, and we shot everything outside in you know shallow shade. And so I'm a I'm sort of chicken. I use I use natural light. Yeah, but you captured it in a dramatic way. There's there's little doubt uh, about that. I want to talk about um, your your previous show. So it was about the homeless. Mm -hmm. Tell us about it a little more. Well, we started, uh, you know, years ago. The, the book actually came out in 2007, so it's right. been a little while. Uh, and I, uh, I had an, or an original idea to do a, something about poetry, and, and I, I like poetry. And I was trying to teach my kids poems, and I thought if I could do a picture and a poem uh, that helped them to understand the poem, that would be good. And uh, that's how I got started. And had a, uh, there was a, a poem about homelessness, and I went to one of the shelters and and. Uh, after I got to spend some time, you know, we'd done working in the soup kitchens and those kind of things, but right. actually being right there with them, uh, I really, you know, got uh, started to get a real feeling about the homeless, and so spent a lot of time, about four years, and, and uh, we uh, eventually came out with a book that uh, it has critical acclaim. It, it, it turned out okay. Yeah, know. I'll say. Uh, you know, I have to tell you, I, I can't imagine how difficult it is to. Uh, find yourself in the world of the homeless and taking pictures of them and and have them be have that situation be one that's amiable or even workable uh, my experience was the minute I sat down a camera and this was I don't know a couple maybe a couple months ago mm -hmm. I was following around uh, some people doing some volunteer work and I had a camera with me right. and you know, I, people swearing cursing throwing things at me for the idea that I might be taking their photo in what I suppose they Probably look at it as a rough time in their life, and mm -hmm. it, it certainly understand that. Mm -hmm. How did you make? How did you bridge that gap? How did you? How did you? How did people get yeah. to the point of being that emotionally connected to you? Because you can't take a good photo without emotion. Yeah, you're right. And, and uh, you know, when I very first, the first day I went there, I, I had thought if if we did anything and it turned into any sort of a project, we were going to donate any any money that came from it to right. to the homeless. And so I talked to some people and I said, hey, you know, I'm going to try to do this project and it's going to all be for helping the homeless, these homeless people I'm talking to. And I said, I'd really like to take your picture. And they, they told wow. me, they told me where to go. And, yeah, I'm uh, sure. And so I thought, well, wait a minute, there's got to be a way to solve this. And so I said, I'll tell you what, I'll give you $10. And really? Yes. And, uh, you know, and I, I, I was studying with Andrew Eccles at the time in, in New York and we had a big debate about you know, is that okay to give people money? I said, you know what, they need these people. The Ten dollars is a big deal to them. And as soon as I did that, I had lines up of people. And I think what happened is I, I'd get five hundred dollars from my ATM, get it turned into fifty, you know, ten dollar bills, and I could shoot, you know, usually forty eight because I'd give ten dollars to the guy, the couple of guys that helped me. And um, I think they. 
they watched as the as we you know as they as the 50 people cycled through, and I think they saw that I cared about them. I think that, and, and well, you'd have to show that, right? I mean, that's the mm -hmm. the simple fact of kitchen in there. I, I mean, it was kind of the next question: is how do you put the, how do you keep them in their environment and and have it be normal and natural, uh, if not for having that uh, yeah. relationship? Yeah, and, you know, and, and only shot you know for four or five minutes with each one. Wow! But, but it was the kind of thing that uh, I, I I guess I just I trusted them. You know, I never worried, even though I was in you know these pretty rough parts of the you know big cities and all around the country yeah. I never worried and I think they sensed that and I don't think they worried about me I think it was a there was sort of a uh, an immediate connection and and um, you know I put my arm around him after I'd take their picture and give them a little bit of money and wish him the best and very often they'd say you know God bless you for what you're doing and so it was really the, I know what you're talking about in terms oh, of the yeah. defensiveness that people have. It's intense. Uh, but they you know it I really didn't have much of that, and it was because I think the the money actually broke down sort of that you know there was a motivation there, yeah. and then and then they were able to see, and I'd say you know I want to hear your story, I want you to tell me your story, with your eyes, and I think they that made them think, and they think what you know, what is my story, right? And then you'd see the you know this emotion in their face, and everything. the reflection of it, mm -hmm. amazing stuff. This new project, Soldier Boy, Soldier Girl, mm -hmm. where does it come from? When I was shooting the homeless, uh, one of the most disturbing parts of it was that so many of the homeless that I photographed were veterans. Right. And in in uh, L.A., where I, I shot an yeah. awful lot in Los Angeles, and in uh, one statistic I heard, now I didn't do my own study or whatever, but uh, from some pretty reliable sources that said at one point 80 percent of the male population in L.A. were, home, were veterans. That eighty oh, percent of the homeless, homeless males, male, yeah, were veterans. No, uh, no doubt there. I know that their their veterans hospital is enormous. They, the 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 um, the work that they're doing there is there's a lot. Yeah. It, it's it's intense. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, and it just seemed. Uh, I don't think this is any you know revelation or at all. But it just seems pretty fouled up. Oh, <laughs> you know, for sure. That we have these people who've uh, my my position, and not to get overly political. It's not a political position. It's that. You know, these people went out there and they were willing to put their life on the line and right uh, whether whether they did or di you know whether they were in actual combat or whether they lost their life they put their life on the line right. and and then many of them even if they were just psychologically wounded or whatever they, you know their entire life they they're they're going to carry that with them and so i just felt like boy yeah, there's i wish there was something we could do because i think with the homeless we it actually did some good i think we raised some awareness about it and I thought, you know, maybe we could do something with veterans. And so I started to photograph uh, veterans all uh, around the country. I photographed the Congressional Medal, a per, you know, a man who had received the Congressional Medal of Honor, a um, person who ran special uh, forces worldwide, and you know, I mean, some people like that. And then I photographed privates in the in the army as well. And the difficulty that we had was getting a consistent look and feel to it. You, you know, you can relate because you you, you yeah. understand photography and. To get something that looked fairly consistent, it was difficult, and because we were trying to capture the whole cycle of the military, and sure. so finally we said, you know, maybe there's a different way, and uh, we decided to take a sing a, an individual and then put them in a uniform from each war, and photograph that same person in a Revolutionary War uniform, a War of 1812, the Civil War, both the Confederate and the Union side. And, wow. the, and then Mexican-American, First World War, Second World War, and so on. And we wanted to send the message that, number one, these are people that have fought for us. There have been millions of people who fought for, our, for us. And, right. and uh, we need to remember them and pay tribute to them. And then secondly, you know, war doesn't change. Uniforms change, but war, right. war, war doesn't change. And wow. you know, when, as we go into war, and it's different, you know, right? The reason we fought the Revolutionary War is a heck of a lot different than <laughs> why we're fighting right now, right? It's For just, sure. And Second World War was different than Vietnam. But uh, so it's not, this is not meant to be a, an editorial on the, the types ri of war, the rightness yeah. or wrongness of war. It's just, yeah. you know what? War, war has a high cost, you know, not only financially, but more importantly, the, the people cost. And Indeed. So 
Well, I'm excited to see a couple of your uh, shots, and we have a couple of them here, so we'll put one up on the screen right now. And this is a, a beautiful shot here. Tell us about this. This is a, a soldier boy, and he's uh, dressed in a, uh, the uniform of the, the in the Civil War on the Confederate side. So you know, you had the blues and the grays. Well, this is the gray. This is the gray, and. Uh, uh, he, he, it, we, so we did this, and then you see him in another image where he is wearing the, the Union side, and uh, uh, that's, the, that's the, the Civil War for you. Interesting uh, that you'd use the same model mm -hmm. as we go through each of these, because that is the part that, that in essence, uh, kind of pulls all of this together, is the fact that, as you said, it's, it doesn't matter where, how, why. Mm -hmm. Still war. Mm -hmm. Very interesting that yeah. you you know draw that parallel just by the use of the um, of the model. Mm -hmm. Here's our, our next uh, shot here. Well, this is a soldier girl, and uh, uh, she, uh, her name is Sienna Miller, by the way. And Rich Barton was the his soldier boy, but okay. uh, she is. Uh, it, it, this is a, in the Second World War. There were African American female African American pilots. Really? And, yeah, and they flew. They didn't fly, fly combat missions. They flew cargo, but it okay. was for for the armed armed forces, and uh, so we thought that would be a a great image. And it was, uh, one of the interesting things about the uh, soldier girl is that because we started the Revolutionary War, and because she's African American, at that point they were the vast majority were slaves. Right, and so we said, okay, what 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 were they doing at that point? And there was a lot. The nurses were the, a lot of the African American slaves were used as nurf, nurses. Wow! And uh, so you see them in a, in a nurse's outfit in, in in the Revolutionary War, and by the time we get to World War II, they're flying, you know, combat or a, a big aircraft. Amazing! And, and then you get to Desert Storm, and they're in active combat. So it's an interesting. Uh, evolution. I, yeah, I'm not. Uh -huh. so, I'm not. I. I wouldn't. I really wouldn't comment as to what the progress is. You know, because I'm not sure. You know, right. You know what I mean? It's so. So we put somebody in a situation you where know, they the, get killed. You know, but uh, being military, though, the one thing I've always, I've always said, and I, I think it's true, is it seems the military does lead out on social issues in a lot of ways. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're you know the first to integrate, first to you know bring uh, you know some kind of. Uh, I don't know, sense of what the rest of the nation mm -hmm, will have mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in the way of behavior socially, uh, both, you know, with, with uh, race and religion, things like that. I think it's an interesting part of it, for sure. Yeah. Uh, let's well, take you a know, look I've, at I've read a lot about, a lot of opinions about the, the uh, you know, the, the merits of having women in combat and right. all the different arguments about it. And, uh, you know, uh, the net net is, Women are every bit as capable at doing things as right. as men, and physically or mentally or whatever. And so it is good to see the equality. Absolutely. Let's take a look at your next uh, shot here. This is beautiful. Wow. This is Soldier Boy, and that's the Vietnam uh, Vietnam War. And uh, yeah, the lighting on this, uh, although you said, uh, as you mentioned, it's it's uh, natural lighting. It's still very dramatic. Yeah, and you know we we a little bit of wrap around, but uh -huh. still wow. Yeah, and I think you can do uh, very dramatic lighting with natural light. It's just, you know, it's just learning how to do it. Yeah, <laughs> I would love to know how you do it. Would you teach but, me? Uh, Good goodness, that's what awesome I, shot. I love this. I love this picture. I mean, I think it it really does for for me kind of capture the the the, the essence of, or the the sentiment of the Vietnam War. You know, and and he has a you know he has a look in his eye that. I remember kids, you know, friends of oh, mine, yeah. you know, going to Vietnam and and coming back from Vietnam, and and that look seemed right to me. I've been covering a lot of 50-year high school reunions lately, mm -hmm. and a lot of those are are the people who left right as they graduated mm -hmm. uh, to Vietnam, and it's uh, I you, you definitely you you know what is kind of interesting you still see that look mm -hmm. in their eyes sure. a little bit. And I think that's that lasting effect of it. Um, I'm hoping my friends in the public affairs office are watching this uh -huh. uh, today because this is just, you know, being able to capture a soldier, I, I, I doing it, trying to do it every day, I can tell you it's, it's difficult. 
this is just uh, that's superb work, thank, thank excellent you. stuff thank you very right much. there. Uh, the, of course, the uh, this is over at the uh, gallery from uh, tomorrow. It starts tomorrow mm -hmm. at Kimball Art Center, and it goes until till December first. Okay, so it'll be there for a few weeks. A little bit of time to go see that. Yeah. And you're in the garage gallery, as I understand it. We are. We it's are. an excellent spot. It's fun, and and you know they did a, the people there, Robin Marouche and their and her t organization are just really terrific. And and the way they they did the installation, it, it looks. I think it looks fantastic. So there's a people art to that to, too, isn't there? There is very much, very much so. Well, I want to thank you so much for coming and sharing. What's next for you? Well, uh, got homeless military. <laughs> Congress? You know, well, <laughs> con con <laughs> I'm, not that, I'm not that brave. <laughs> I'm not um, either. No, I, you know what? We, we have started working on a, a project with the migrant farm workers. And, and, I like uh, that. We actually build a little kind of a portable stu studio trailer. It's very cool. You, if, since you like photo yes. photography, you'd think it's cool. Anyway, to go out into the fields and photograph uh, the migrant workers is in the same way, in a, in a dignified portrait kind of a way. Well, that'll be very interesting. I hope you come back and share it with us when you do that. We'll, we'll do. All right. Well, excellent work. Again, the photographer. Thanks. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so very much for being here. We'll be back with more on the Mountain Morning Show right after these commercial messages.